Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Wes Barton on the line. He's managing partner over at Third Prime. Wes, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. All right, Wes. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So empowering entrepreneurs, especially those outside of Silicon Valley. So this is a, this is a good, this is a great topic. Um, but before we get into that, I'd like to go a little bit further into what you're doing over at Third Prime. So tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Yeah. Uh, so so Third Prime, we're a venture capital firm. We we focused on uh, you know the earliest stages. So um, you know pre seed, seed, Series A. Um, <clears throat> Agnostic on industry, so we're, we're backing entrepreneurs that are doing everything from, you know, building fintech companies, property tech companies, might be, you know, uh, building a healthcare business or, or a software business. So, um, you know, just really looking for, uh, you know, fantastic entrepreneurs, large addressable markets, and building, uh, you know, compelling solutions to real problems. Man, that's awesome. Um, and, you know, there's some entrepreneurs listening, there's other investors, other people listening. Is there any particular like niche, or I know you said um, you said you know Series A precede, but is there any particular niche or industry that you focus on or favor more than another? Just to give our geography, just to give our listeners a, a, a better a better a, a view. Sure, uh, you know fin- fintech is a big one for us. Healthcare uh, and property technology as well, and and you know sort of the you know the thing that is a common th- thread through those items is, is obviously they're they're very large addressable markets. Um, you know, a lot of sort of large uh, incumbent players that, that frankly aren't always that nimble. And, and you know, we, we think it creates a lot of opportunity for, you know, startups, new companies to come in and, and sort of find a wedge in to, to start taking market share and really expand from there. And that's awesome. Um, and I think that's a great transition. So let's just dive into today's topic. So empowering entrepreneurs, especially those outside of Silicon Valley. So I think it's interesting that you say uh, the, the outside of Silicon Valley. Maybe, maybe we start there. Like, why is it important to do this? Yeah, you know, look, it's a great question. And, and you know, the third prime, which we, we launched in 2016, we've got about $100 million under management today. Um, uh, you know, we, we had identified right from the start that, that you know, there are a lot of firms, uh, you know, sort of uh, servicing entrepreneurs in, in, in Silicon Valley, right? But, mm-hmm. um, you know, increasingly there are great entrepreneurs that are, uh, you know, in places like, you know, Nashville, Tennessee, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Austin, and Louisville, Kentucky, and Columbus, Ohio, right? Just sort of all over the map. And, and, and you know, certainly with COVID now and the displacement of, of a lot of folks from San Francisco, New York, you know, where you're seeing more and more uh, people sort of accepting and adopting sort of the, you know, the, the, the remote workforce. Um, and so, you know, from, from the earliest days, we, we'd recognize that there was sort of a dearth of capital in a lot of these markets. You know, we, we, we've done deals, you know, in Charles, South Carolina, and there just aren't a lot of venture capitalists running around, right? Same thing for like Huntsville, mm. Alabama, and, you know, even sort of Nashville, you know, outside of sort of the healthcare space and all. So, um, you know, we, we thought that there was a bit of a supply demand imbalance, and, you know, Third Prime is, is very much trying to address that. Man, that's so true. And and I think, um, you know, you know, especially pre COVID, like the, the one of the hard parts about my in my opinion for founders or entrepreneurs was also, you know, getting somebody like it's not easy to just travel and get into Silicon Valley and like and get a meeting. Like that's not easy. And I'm not saying it's easy to get a meeting with any V C or, you know, private equity firm, but I just mean in general, um it you're you're really opening the playing field and in my opinion, allowing innovation to happen in other areas than maybe this little small area, so to speak. Like it's not easy. Uh, exactly, and, and you know, you sort of touched on it. I mean, so so many of these you know firms are 
really only receptive to, you know, entrepreneurs coming through warm introductions. And, and a lot of times if you're sitting in, in, in middle America, you just might not know, uh, you know, folks in, in, in San Francisco to, to open that door for the venture capital firm. So, you know, at Third Prime, we're working hard to, to put boots on ground in these communities to get to know the incubators, the accelerators, the angel investors, folks that are going to be knowing these entrepreneurs. You really try to wave that flag and let, you know, let, let these you know, folks know that we're open for business in these communities. So, you know, there's some there's some people out there listening right now that are, um, you know, they're, they have ideas or maybe they're, you know, they're in their series A. And what are what are some things that that these founders should be thinking about just in general when they're when they're when they're approaching a VC or when they're thinking about like whether or not raising capital like and I know and I know that's a big question by the way so I don't mean to be loaded I know there's only so much we can cover in 15 minutes or so but um, I think any bit of your from your vantage point would be helpful for those that are out there kind of mulling over like ah what do I what am I doing yeah you, you know first off uh, you know, being an entrepreneur is very hard, right? So, mm-hmm. so I think that uh, it's incredibly important to, to know that you've got just a burning desire to, you know, to solve this problem, to build this product. Um, there, there are easier ways to make money, right? There, there are a lot of sort of failed startups. Um, you know, for every Airbnb and Uber, you know, there there are thousands that that, that, that didn't make it. Um, so, so you've got a tremendous amount of perseverance and grit. So one of the first things that, that you know, we're going to be looking for when we meet entrepreneurs is just that, you know, they're, they're very much a, a missionary, not a mercenary, right? Um, mm. so, so that there's, there's just something that, that just, like I said, that they, they have to do this. It gets them out of bed in the morning, uh, you know, keeps them up late at night. Um, so so, so that, that's something. You know, the other thing, if you're, if you're looking to raise venture capital dollars, uh, you need to be attaching a big problem. You know, so, so if you actually can crack the code, you know, there, there can be a billion dollar business here. So, um, you know, th- that, that's something to keep in mind. And, you know, frankly, for a lot of businesses, you know, venture capital is just not going to be the right, you know, the, the, the proper route. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, venture capital is sort of geared to a very specific type of business, a very specific type of entrepreneur. And so I, I, I think if you're, if you're looking to, you know, to engage with venture capitalists, you, you need to, you know, sort of be mindful of the fact that, that, you know, in many cases, they're going to be looking for, you know, for, you know, sort of large outcomes. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the other thing I, I think that I would, you know, just touch on here is, is, is that, um, you know, you really need to have sort of, uh, you know, sort of a novel idea, right? There, there, there are a lot of, you know, startups out there. there. There are a lot of people trying to tackle certain problems. But, you know, what is that, um, you know, sort of insight that, that perhaps you have that, that will be, uh, you know, sort of that item that helps you crack the code? I think, I think that that's going to be something that, you know, these entrepreneurs need to keep in mind. No, that's great. It's a great point, and and I, I like that you bring up the point. And and not and it's different because I can tell when somebody's uh, when somebody really has the heart of uh, of the entrepreneur mind. Because you're, that one of the things that people don't expect VCs to say many times is maybe venture capital is not for you. Like if it depends, mm-hmm. like it's a very specific type of entrepreneur, individual, and or business model. Like maybe you have something that you love doing, you're passionate about, but it's not scalable to that point. Or maybe this is meant to be maybe like a small business or a large small business, right? It can be a, you can make a lot of money. I mean, I guess small business is all relative, right? It doesn't have to be a, a huge, huge business and you can have a good living and a good life. Like you may not want some of those other pressures that come involved with, um, with taking on capital. It's exactly right. Um, you know, you kind of, you kind of get on that, that flywheel and, you know, most of the time, uh, as I said, we, we invest at the early stages and, and mm-hmm. um, you know, you, you go out and you raise a pre-seed round and then usually what happens is you raise a seed round and a series A round and a B round and so on. And so, you know, a lot of time, you know, a lot of time gets spent fundraising um, and, you know, you become dependent on capital and, and, and sort of capital markets and there's a lot of dilution. So, you know, you, 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 know, you, you read about, you know, uh, these companies that are worth billions of dollars, but oftentimes you look at sort of the entrepreneur and, you know, he, he owns less than 5% of the company at the end of the day because, again, all these rounds have continued uh, you know, to loot um, you know, sort of his stake in, in, in that business. So if, you, if you're doing the math, a lot of times if, if, if what you're trying to accomplish is just, you know, build as much net worth as you can, you know, you're, you're going to be better to own 100% or 70% or whatever it is and sort of avoid a lot of that dilution that's going to come from sort of these venture capital rounds. So I think that that's a very important consideration for, for entrepreneurs to think of from the outset is, you know, how much capital is that business going to require? There's some that will, will take hundreds of millions of dollars, and so the only way to do it is, is to really get onto that you know, venture capital cycle. Mm-hmm. But there are others that, that can be, you know, bootstrapped and that it could be sort of, you know, profitable from the very earliest days that just won't require, 
you know, sort of that outside capital and won't, you know, uh, therefore, um, you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, have, have the uh, tenant dilution. All right. So I, I don't want to be biased either way. So I, I like to start with that, with that side of the argument, which is maybe you don't need capital. But now let's go to the other side of the argument. And I, I like to start the other way because I don't want us to, either of us to seem self-serving. But, but like, what are some of the benefits of working with a VC though? Because I do want to touch on those too, because there are a lot of benefits with having that type of structure. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so the way we're organized is, uh, you know, we, we have at, the, at this point about 35 companies in our, in our portfolio. Um, you know, we, we come into the office every day and, uh, you know, very much are, are thinking about how can we best help those companies succeed. So, you know, typically what's going to happen is, you know, once we finance the company, we're going to get aligned with those entrepreneurs to figure out what milestones, you know, need to get achieved over the next 12, 24 months. Uh, you know, to go raise that subsequent round of financing. In most cases, it's going to be a Series A for us. But, um, you know, and what we're going to do is we're going to be deploying our, our, our relationships, you know, trying to, you know, trying to open as many doors as we can, trying to be as thoughtful as we can strategically, you know, to help the business. Also, in many cases, you know, even, you know, sort of more in the trenches, even sort of thinking through some of the tactical uh, decisions that need to get made, trying to help, um, you know, those entrepreneurs hire the best talent they can. You know, obviously, we're in an ecosystem here where there are a lot of talented folks and, uh, you know, we, we oftentimes, you know, are, are sort of very aware of who, who might be looking to, you know, to make a move and, and you know, who we could plug into, um, you know, company to really help drive it forward. So it's, you know, what you're going to find with us is is a lot more than capital. You know, you're, you're going to find a partner that is, is incredibly aligned to, you know, to your success. And that's what it takes, really. And that's what and, and I think the great like VCs and the great firms out there, that's really what what it takes. And I think that's what they what they bring to the table. And that's where I always say it's like they're not building your business for you. They're not doing this and that. But it's kind of nice to have somebody like in the in the money business and in the area and, and having a different vantage point, like you said, who's going to make me make, make a move or who might be a strategic executive or all these other things. It's kind of nice to have somebody on that side, too. Right. Especially as you start going, if, if you make it to the point and you start going to these these further rounds i mean you both have everybody in the, everybody playing that game has a vested interest in making sure that we get to the next round right exactly right look we're you know we like i said we started in 2016 we, we've got you know big aspirations for our business and you know we go as our entrepreneurs go right so there's very much that that alignment and um you know their, their success you know helps drive our success Man, this is awesome. That's a great story, Wes. Um, and I can, and I can talk to you about this, uh, all day long, but we're about out of time on this episode. So that being said, if somebody is listening to this and they want more information on third prime or they want to follow your portfolio companies or any, or, or just learn more about your work in general, um, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out and to do that? Yeah, uh, you know, so we got a website, thirdprime.vc, uh, it's certainly one way. And if you want to reach out, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, you, you can find us, you know, there, there from the website. Um, also I'm, I'm on Twitter, uh, at farmer underscore VC, uh, you know, started, uh, before venture capital, I started as a, as a, I grew up on a farm in Kentucky, so, so that's a, at farmer underscore VC. But, uh, yeah, be, be happy to, you know, to, to meet entrepreneurs and, and folks who are looking to learn more about venture capital. Man, that's awesome. I appreciate it, Wes. Well, hey, and I appreciate you coming on the show and also what you're doing for entrepreneurs, empowering them, you know, world, whether they're in Silicon Valley or not. I mean, I'm a big fan of what you're doing and providing that opportunity and just helping our, helping our entrepreneurs out there get to that next level. So I mean, it's great stuff. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Wes, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. Really enjoyed it.